Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2022. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure that this book is in front of you when you're working with me. Today we'll solve some problems that you will find on page number 144, beginning with 206. As you can see, the problem is already on the blackboard. It's a very straightforward problem. We are told that the area of the shaded region is three times the area of the smaller circle. The question simply is, what's the ratio of the circumference of the large circle to circumference of the small circle? Let's, let's draw the circles. So here's our large circle. Here's the small circle. Let's call the radius of the small circle small r. And we're going to call the radius of the large circle from here to here big R. And we are looking for the we are looking for the ratio of the circumference of the large circle to circumference of the small circles. Circumference of the large circle is very straightforward since the radius is since the since the radius of the large one is capital R, it is simply 2 pi big R over 2 pi small r. Those are the circumference. That's the ratio of circumference to the large to the small. As you can see, 2 pi drops out. Essentially what they're asking here is for us to figure out the ratio of the radii, ratio of the radius of the large circle to the, radi to the, ratio, to the radius of the small circle. Let's see what we can do. We are, so that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the ratio of the radii, as I said. So let's start. We know that the area of the shaded region is equal to three times the area of the small circle. And shaded region is right here. This is all the shaded region. And the area of the shaded region is simply going to be the area of the large circle minus the area of the small circle. The area of the large circle is simply 2 pi, or rather pi r squared minus pi r small pi r squared, the small r. That's the area of the shaded region. And we are told this is equal to 3 times the area of the small circle, which is simply pi r, pi and a small r squared. Let's see where this takes us. As you can see, if you bring this pi r squared, the small r over here, instead of three of them, we'll end up with four of them. So what we end up here is pi r, capital R squared, is equal to, one bring it here, it becomes four times pi r, small, small r. Again, the pi's are gonna drop out, and we end up with the large radius over the small radius squared has to equal to 4. There you go. Take the square root of it and we are all done. The ratio of the two radii is 2 to 1. It is simply 2 to 1. Despite the fact that the area of the shaded region is 3 times the area of the small circle, the ratio is not 3 to 1 as you might jump. That's the sucker answer. It's 2 to 1. Let's do the next one. The next one is a little bit more involved. It, I'm going to first set it up and then we'll, then we'll take a look. We are told that we have a club. We are told that we have a club and in that club we are told that the number, of the number of members that we have is more than 10. But less than 40. Somewhere between 10 and 40 is how many people we have in the club. This is what we are told. We are told that sometimes they said, let me erase all of this thing. We are told that sometimes they sit three at one table, three at one table, three people sit at one table, and four at each of the other. Some other times, some other times they sit again three at one table, but five. At each of the other. This is how they sit. So they always have three persons sitting at one table and then the other tables they either have four people sitting at each of the tables or five people sitting at each of the tables. Here's, here's the question. The question is if we have six people sitting, if we have six people sitting 
at the uh, at each table in the, in the last scenario if you have six people sitting at each table then the question is how many people are sitting at the remaining last table if they sit six at each of the table except the last one how many people are sitting at the last one how many at the last one and we are told that the last table has fewer than six so let's be, let's see what we can do let's begin we have three people sitting at this table and then we have four people sitting at each of the other so we have four people sitting let's say at the end table all the possibility is that we have three people sitting again at one table and five people sitting at each of the other table this is this is n so i'm going to call this n what we need to understand is that the number of people that we have in the club obviously is constant which means this quantity has to equal this quantity which and this, this is 3 and this is 3 which means this quantity has to equal this quantity and the only way this quantity can equal this quantity there is only one possibility which is 4 times 5 and 5 times 4 4 times 5 is going to give us 20 20 plus 3 is 23 here we get 23 in other words we have 23 people in the club we have 23 people in the club and since 6 of them are sitting at each table it must be 6 times 3 which is 18 and we have 5, five remaining in the last table do you understand? because we are told that the last table we have fewer than 6 people therefore it cannot be 12, it cannot be 6 it cannot be 12 in the remaining here this is the only possibility the only other possibility because this quantity 4 times n has to equal 5 times m the only other possibility is the next possibility that is not the only other but the next possibility is that we, we may have 4 times 10 which is 40 and here we have to make it 40 which makes it 5 times 8 that's 40 and that's 40 the problem is that in this scenario we have 40 people here and we have 3 people here that's 43 people but we are told that we have fewer than 40 people so that's the only scenario this is the only scenario that's going to work and that leaves us at, that leaves us with a total of 23, 23 people in the club and if 23 people were to, 20, 23 people in the club were to sit in such a way that there are 6 people sitting on each table except the last one then this is the scenario we have 18 people sitting here, 5 over there. And that's all there is. Next one, 207. As you can see, these questions, as I always tell you, they are 208 rather. These questions, as I always tell you, they are quite straightforward. You just have to take your time. Straightforward algebra problem. We are told that we planned to read 90 pages per day. Let's say for n days. What happened was that was my plan. I wanted to read 90 pages per day for n days for my assignment. But what happened was that, but I read only 75 pages per day for the first for the first n minus six days I have six days remaining I have given number of days that I have to do the assignment I have only six days left to finish my assignment I have to read this book I had planned to read 90 pages per day I did not do that I only read 75 pages per day in the beginning I have only six days left now which means that we must read we must read the remaining 690 pages in 6 days because that's how many days I have left the question is how many days did I have all together to do my assignment that's all there is how many days did we have that, that we were given to read this book given this scenario well, since we were planning to read 90 pages per day for n days, that means we must have 90 times n total pages. In the beginning, in the first few days, we read 75 pages per day for the first n minus six, six n minus six days, because there is only six because there are six days left at the end. That's how many pages we read in the first few days, and now we have to read the remaining 690 pages. And that's all there is. This straightforward linear equation is all we have, all we all that we have to deal with. 
we just solve for n, we're done. So here we have 90n, here we have 75n, subtract 75n from both sides, we're going to end up with 15n is going to give us negative 6, negative 6 times 75, negative 6 times, and we have 690 here, 690 times minus negative 6 times 75, 2 times 75 is not, I know it's 150, therefore 6 times 75 must be 450. and 40 looks like. Let's divide both sides by 3, or rather, let's divide both sides, let's divide by 3. Let's divide by 3, it just becomes 5, 28 is made up of 8, uh, 8, 3, 8, 3 is at 20, 8, 3 is at uh, 24, and 0 has no 3. So that's what we end up with. Divide both sides by 5 again, and we end up with n equals to, divided by 10 would have been 8, so it's 16. 80 divided by 10 would have been 8, Therefore, 80 divided by 5 must be 16. That's all. In other words, we had 16 days altogether to do our assignment. And it turns out that the first 10 days, we only read 75 pages per day. we got to finish the job in the remaining 6 days. 209. Two hundred and nine is about as simple as it can get in this exam, which is this question right here. We are told that square root of r over s equals s. Question is how much is r? That's all. Squ square both sides. If you square both sides, we end up with r over s equals s squared, and therefore r equals s cubed. As you can see, it's a joke. Number 10. Number, or rather 210 is what I meant to say. Number 210. We are, told, we are told that we have the quantity x which is greater than 3 but less than 100. Here's the question. The question is for how many values of x is this quantity x over 3 equal to the square of a prime number. For how many values of x would this be true that a third of a x that a third of a third of the x is exactly equal to square of a prime number given the fact that it has to be more than 3 and less than 100. So let's list, let's list our prime number before we do anything else. Let's list our prime numbers we have 2, 3, 5, 7, the next one would be 11, and so on and so forth. Let's see what we can do. So this has to equal x over 3, and this has to be square, because it has to be square of a prime number. Is this possible? The answer is, why not? That's a 4, that's a 3, which means this implies, this implies that x must be 12. And that certainly works. Is this possible? Let's find out, shall we? So x over 3 has to equal 3 squared, 3 squared is 9, 9 times 3 is 27, that implies that x would be 27. That works, that still falls within this range. Can it be 5? x over 3 has to equal 5 squared, in which case 5 squared is 25, 25 times 3 is 75. I hope that you're able to see right away that this is going to be the end of the story, because we are approaching the end of the range here. That's not going to, that's not going to work, because this is going to give us 49. And 49 times 3, that implies that 49 times 3, and that is not less than 100. That is not less than 100. It does not work. For how many values of x is this true? For how many values of the x is this true that the third of the x is equal to square of a prime number? The answer is for three values. For 2, 3, and 5. 7 does not work. Only for three values. That was 210. That's the end of the page. I don't want to start a new page right now. We're going to call it a day here. We'll meet again tomorrow and we're going to pick up from 211 and we'll do the page, next page, all of them there, from 211 to 217 and the next video. Alright? I'll see you tomorrow. In the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me, if you would like to work with me, if you would like to hire me to help you get you, re get you ready for the exam, for the math, math portion of the GMAT, you can always get, get hold of me by simply visiting my website at kashmaniprep.com. From there you can send me an email or you can simply send me an email to kashmaniprep at icloud.com. Alright, bye now.